Okay, we're going to have a look at the starter motor and service the starter motor, which will mainly be uh, checking it's working, giving it a good grease, and then checking the brushes uh, and cleaning the commutator that the brushes run on, and that, uh, assuming that everything is working um, and doesn't need mending, it should just need a service. <clears throat> so I've wired up a battery earth and then we've got live going to the live on the solenoid the, in, the input on the solenoid and then the output from the solenoid goes to the starter motor uh, and then i've got like a kind of ignition wire um, and so when that's connected then that should fire the solenoid and that activates this mechanism the uh, bendix mechanism as it's called and that thrusts the uh, starter motor ring gear, well, starter motor pinion, I think, that thrusts it forwards, which will then engage with the ring gear on the clutch. So the starter motor on this bike, unlike the Norton Commando, it's, it's not uh, always engaged. Uh, it's only engaged when, that, when that's thrust, that uh, pinion is thrust forwards and then it engages with the ring gear and when you let go it comes back in again so the starter motor is only engaged when it's activated on the commando it's it's pre-engaged i think that's the right word so it's engaged the whole time uh, and so you have a thing called a sprag bearing which uh, means that the engine goes round but there's, it doesn't dry the starter motor around when it's not being used Okay, so I wired it all up. Uh, I'm going to touch that to live, and then hopefully the uh, Bendix will thrust this forward and the motor will go around. So it's a two part operation. The solenoid pushes the Bendix, and then obviously the starter motor turns it. So let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forwards and then the actual motor is turning so we know we have a working starter motor which is great everything's working on it it's just a question of servicing it and making sure it's all clean and it sounds it doesn't it sounds like it's turning quite nicely it's not rasping so it sounds like it's quite well lubricated but we're going to put new grease in it anyway grease it all up and then uh just check that the uh clean out all the, the dust there's going to be dust from the uh, uh, <laughs> from the brushes because as the brushes where they create dust I've taken those off in the past it's been full of dust check that the brushes are still got some meat on them they don't need replacing and then we will clean the commutator carefully uh, that the brushes run on to make sure we you know so that the starter motor is as efficient as it can be just a quick note on the starter generally by the way i find that these starters work fine so unlike the norton commando the legendary sort of uh, what, what do they call it uh, starter assist they called it because the starters simply weren't man enough to turn the engine over so the idea was you press the button <coughs> and kicked it over um but you, you can get them working the commando ones when you upgrade them but with these they generally work okay the easiest upgrade is to simply um, improve, upgrade the, the actual power cables that go to the starter and go to earth. They're very thin, the originals, and so if you put in modern, thicker or, or high, high current, high flow current cables, then that will increase your power by at least 10%, probably 20% just by doing that. And I think that's the only real upgrade you need to do to one of these starters. You can upgrade. There's Dave Madigan in the States. He does a good uh, uh, upgrade and it does turn the engine over much faster. But I don't think you need it. So what I would say is if your starter motor goes for some reason, you know, it stops working, then I'd upgrade. But I don't think there's a need to upgrade if, you, you know, if, if it's working fine. Um, because, you know, they spin the engine over and start it, no problem. Especially if you have changed the, the power cables to thicker cables. 
Uh, I think we can see there, like that's that's a pretty um, the original. That's gone. Isn't it? That's a pretty spindly, uh, small diameter cable. So <clears throat> it doesn't allow much current to flow. It's only short, so I think you probably get away with that. But with the long cables that go to the battery and then to earth from the battery, you need good, thick, solid cables that are uh, other, simply an, an, enough current somebody doesn't get to the starter motor otherwise. You know, the battery's trying, but it can't literally push the current through those piddly little wires. <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, so the starter motor should be okay. Uh, if, it, if it's working fine, it should be well enough to turn the engine over. Oh, again, especially, of course, if you upgrade the battery to a modern battery as well. So, yeah, a modern battery and modern uh, cables and the starter should be fine. I use motor bat batteries, um, AGM batteries, absorbed glass matte batteries, generally made by motor bat, sort of bright yellow ones. And, um, yeah, I, I think they're great um because they there is acid in them but it's absorbed so it's like solid they, they don't leak they don't need topping up if the battery goes flat it doesn't damage them you can just charge them straight back up and flat and they're still as powerful and also they don't tend to go flat anyway in the first place so i always recommend the motor back battery and just obviously put a sort of a, put a big one in uh, for your starter motor and it'd be absolutely fine i've never ever had a problem with these not turning the engine over sufficiently okay the first thing i'm going to do is remove this end plate uh, behind which are the three is it three brushes four brushes <laughs> can't remember anyway the brushes are behind here so we just undo these two very long uh, screw bolts and hold the cover on Trying to do this on camera so you can see what's going on. They are big long bolts go all the way through the starter motor to the other side, always the way through past the uh, through the windings past the armature. Right, so we've got those off and then this cap simply will just pull off then and see what we got underneath so it's dry a bit dry in there so we could do with some grease on this uh, bearing that the armature runs on but not a huge amount of dust I was expecting that that cap to be fairly full of dust but it's obviously it's dirty it's not too bad yeah, four brushes, get it right. And there's a bit of meat on all of them. They still, the brushes are still thick enough that they stick out the back of their, their cage. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Um, anyway, there's good meat. I don't know if you can see these. It's difficult trying to get light on this sort of thing. But um, yeah, there's the four brushes. You can see. I'll just pull that one back. Yeah. Okay, so that's the back of the brush there. So the back of the brushes is still sort of beyond the uh, the bracket, so that's okay. And then you've got the commentator. As you can see, it's fairly black. Uh, it's not much, uh, you can't see much sort of uh, copper on it. So we're going to be cleaning that uh, commutator up. Um, just, just to get, just to make sure we get really good contact from the brushes onto the commutator. Because if you get too much buildup of um, carbon, is it on, on that? Then that can interfere with the good contact between the brush and the commutator. But you have to be careful cleaning that commutator up. We'll come on to that when we do it. You, you, you don't just want to attack it willy nilly because you can do a lot of damage. And in fact, you can stop the whole thing from working. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, separate these two parts. So um, we've got uh, the flanges. The flange is held on by three bolts. These two flanges holding together. So you've got one there, obviously, and one there. But where's the third one? The third one, you probably won't be able to see this. Um, but it's down 
it is actually down in there it's an although you can just see it can you see it there it's uh, an allen an allen bolt right down in there so you need to you need to get down to undo that one and undo these two flange nuts and then the two bodies will come apart before i do that i'm going to undo uh, remove this uh, cable because obviously uh, when it comes apart you know the uh, one the ends of the cable will be on different parts of the starter motor I'll see if I can get a new rubber boot for this uh, not great that is it but I'll see if I can get a new one it's got a big hole in that rubber boot right so uh, I'm just going to go off camera and I'm just going to loosen these two nuts and see if I can get an allen key allen screw down and a key down to undo that one down there okay I've managed to get the uh, two flange nuts off and then I've got the iron screw out from down inside the Bendix uh, movement that was a real pain didn't want to come out got my uh, you, have, you have to go right down inside got the Allen key on it but it it was so tight I had to put my mole grips on the end of the Allen key to give myself more leverage and that was the only way and then snap it finally went did not want to that did not want to come out uh, and I've also removed the undone the wire from the body of the motor so I can just pull them apart now there we go and that's just a sort of gear mechanism in there it seems pretty well lubricated but we will be greasing this up okay so that's all the bendix movement separate over here yeah and we'll we'll be it's all working we'll just be gre cleaning it and greasing it up and then we've got the actual uh, motor here and then i'm just trying to work it out so then this i'm fairly sure that this will just knock off and then we can get the armature out and think the, the problem we have to be careful of is that when the armature comes out that will release all the uh, the four uh, brushes and then it's a bit of a pain getting the armature back in once the brushes are all closed up but there's a trick to that will come to it when we put it back in so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock this, see if I can try to remember it. But I think the easiest way is going to be to knock the end of the armature, which is then knock this flange off. <laughs> Famous last words. So I've got the, um, what do you call it? The soft side, can't think of the right word. The soft side of the hammer. There. So I just tapped it and that's pushed this end part off and we're going to take it out with the armature but then as we do that then we can watch and we'll see that the um there are all the brushes are now yeah some of it stick that's good because we can lubricate those but you see they've all now come in although some of them are a bit sticky so they need lubricating a bit okay and then we've got the armature so it just pulls out of the end and then there's a little bit of grease on that bearing. The thing about greasing these bearings up is obviously we don't want to get grease on the armature. But there we've got the body that's got all the windings in that's uh, uh, sorry that's got the magnets in it hasn't it? Yeah <laughs> get it right I think those are the magnets and then that's the winding and if you turn the winding inside a magnet it generates a current or if you put a current in it turns it into a motor it's basically the same principle so a dynamo you'll turn this and that will generate electricity a starter motor put electricity in and it will turn this something like that anyway okay so we'll put that aside for now we're going to look at those brushes they should be freely moving the brushes should be moving freely in their housing and some of them are a bit sticky so again that won't be helping to make good contact with the uh, commutator so i'm just going to lightly clean this up now so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a dry bit of tissue i don't really want to get it wet on here 
Well, the problem we got is that if the brushes get wet with oil or whatever, or, or you know any sort of cleaning fluid, they tend to uh, stay. They go a bit mushy. Uh, and if you put this back on with, with their mushy, they'll simply just like a there's a spread carbon all over this armature, all over this commutator. So you want to clean it, but um, you don't want to actually make it worse. So I'm just using this cloth for now. And already, I think, hopefully you can see it's already getting some of that black off just by wiping it that's good we've got a pretty clean uh, commutator already because what we want is to make sure we get good really good contact between the brushes and the commutator okay so it's already clean and what I'm going to do now I'm going to just use a little bit of um, just hang on Okay, I'm going to use uh, a little bit of this um, slightly abrasive material. Now, I say slightly abrasive material because I've forgotten what it's called. I'm having one of those mental blocks. It'll come to me in a minute. If it doesn't come to me, you'll see the name of it up on the screen when I remember what it's called. Uh, you know, sometimes I despair of myself. What's it called? It'll come to me. Um, anyway, it's a very, it's great stuff. This is just lightly abrasive cloth. And so uh, we're just going to use that on the commutator because we've got it like fairly clean, you know, but now we're going to try and get it very clean. What's the damn stuff called? Oh, it won't come to me. Oh, well, it'll come to me eventually. It's one of those. Are we getting old or are we getting old? God, I'm waiting for it to come and it won't really come. No, okay. no, I'll have to put a sign up on the on the video as to what it is when I've remembered it eventually. There, yeah, it's great stuff. This because it's just right for cleaning commutators. It's not, you know, it's just a slightly abrasive cloth. Whose name I can't remember. There, can we see that now? So we've got a nice bright commutator. We've not put any fluids on or anything. Um, we're just giving it a very light clean. First of all, just got the worst of it off with a cloth. Scotch bright! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! And then using my Scotch bright pad. Hurrah! Woohoo! Scotch bright. That's the stuff. Flipping X made my day. Using my Scotch bright pad, then we've just. Uh, giving it a, a gentle, very gentle clean, so it's all nice and shiny. And so that's going to make good contact with the uh, uh, with the brushes. Oh, blimey, the old mind's going, in it? There we go. Right.